Well, howdy varmints. In this video, I'll show you how I made a pH buffer out of citric acid and sodium hydroxide for sugar washes. <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. This channel is dedicated to challenging home distilling traditions in an apartment setting. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully automated robotic reflux still operating on open source technology on a Raspberry Pi computer. I'll be talking about pH and pH buffers in this video. I'll refrain from using scientific jargon whenever possible. I took first year university chemistry about 15 years ago, so I'm a little rusty here. In a previous video, we discovered that sugar washes have no natural pH buffers, and that fermentation produces acid as the yeast eats through the sugar. With nothing in the sugar wash to counteract the acid added by fermentation, Fermentation eventually will slow as the pH drops and possibly stop altogether. This means that it may take forever for your fermentation to complete. My goal is to create a cheap, food safe pH buffer made with readily available materials that don't affect the flavor of your final spirit. In order to make a pH buffer, we need a weak acid and its conjugate base. I did a little research and it looks like citric acid fits that bill nicely. Acetic acid, also known as vinegar, has a boiling point of 118 degrees Celsius. Citric acid, on the other hand, has a boiling temp of 310 Celsius, meaning that it should stay in the boiler during distillation. It's cheap, safe to handle, and available at homebrew supply stores and online. So we have the weak acid, and now we need to find its conjugate base. Sodium citrate can be used. Sodium citrate is the sodium salt of citric acid, which will give us the conjugate base for citric acid when it's dissolved in water. It's used as a food preservative and a flavoring. The sodium ion that we gain from sodium citrate is the same ion found in table salt. It's not poisonous, it won't boil off, and won't harm the yeast at low levels. Sodium citrate can be purchased. I looked around online, but ultimately decided that I already had a bunch of citrate acid laying around, and that it would be easy enough to make sodium citrate from it. I don't want to get stuck with a big bag of useless sodium citrate if my experiment doesn't work out. So I popped over to my local soap making store and bought about 200 grams of sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, also known as caustic soda, for about $2. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base and it's dangerous to handle. They use it in the brewing industry to clean equipment. It will burn you and turn your skin into soap. It could ruin anything it touches, so handle it with care and handle it at your own risk. I'm wearing eye protection, gloves, old clothes, and I'm mixing on a glass countertop. The more sodium citrate we add, the more citric acid we'll need to balance it out. The more sodium citrate and citric acid we add, the more capacity the buffer will have to resist changes in pH. As this is my first time making a pH buffer, I looked at some numbers I found on the Still Dragon forum as my initial jumping off point. Let's talk about what happens when we combine water, citric acid, and sodium hydroxide. In water, we have citric acid disassociating to form hydrogen ions and a citrate ion, and sodium hydroxide disassociates into a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. The hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion combine to form water and heat. We are left with the sodium ion and a citrate ion. 
we have formed sodium citrate in solution. We now need to add more citric acid or sodium hydroxide to reach the desired pH for the buffer. My resulting solution was too acidic, so I continually added more sodium hydroxide until a pH of 6.0 was reached. The reaction is exothermic, so make sure you use a jar like I did or laboratory beakers. If you would like to learn more about how pH buffers work, I'll include a card in the corner that explains it using Legos. I found this to be a practical explanation of pH buffers. So here we have our very first try at a pH buffer. The final ingredients we ended up using was 44.1 grams of citric acid with 25 grams of sodium hydroxide to create a buffer with a, a pH of 6.0. It's intended to be used with a six gallon batch of sugar wine with a specific gravity of 1.070. Did we build enough capacity into this buffer? Will it work or will it be a failed experiment? Will it outperform other methods of controlling pH? Tune in next time to find out. Our next video will compare experimental data on different ways to control pH for sugar washes. We'll compare this pH buffer to oyster shells, to baking soda, and to no additions at all. I will see you in the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and smash that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hope you're having a great day, and I love you very, very much.